All right. Well, um, that was my uh, first slide there. Move this over here. Um, so my name is Nate Collins, and uh, I'm a senior software engineer at Teamworks, a company in Durham. Uh, we build uh, software for collegiate and professional sports. And uh, in my day-to-day, uh, -day, uh, I'm a full-stack developer, and I, I, I actually don't work on uh, voice apps. But the Jovo framework is something that I have found very intriguing. And as a um, back-end and, and a front-end full-stack developer, it's, it's something I've been wanting to get into a lot more. And uh, for fun, um, throw the one wheel in there, and I've gotten into some Dutch oven cooking, with some fun facts. But um, like many of you, <clears throat> and one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this was because uh, many of us are, are busy creating mobile apps cross-platform, you know, with React Native and other such platforms. Uh, we're, we're busy uh, developing web apps, and we've just kind of looked over and glanced at this voice technology and uh, haven't had a moment to take a look at it. And so uh, what I hope from today is that you can uh, see how easy it is to get a skill out there and deploy it using Jovo. Uh, the, for me, I read an article, I think it was this one, it, it was one very similar to it, but my realization was that, uh, you know, about voice was that the music industry, because so many people play songs on their smart speakers, the music industry was um, having to uh, change the, the way they name albums, the way they name artists, and um, also, not just that, but metadata. So when somebody says play happy songs, you know, play sad songs, um, things like that, they, they need their songs to actually surface in these uh, smart speakers. So this uh, very uh, ancient and slow to move industry um, was one of the first, I think, to, to start scrambling due to this new voice technology. If you look at the uh, front page of the uh, developer page, it was there for a while, I actually didn't check it today, <laughs> but, um, a successful person there, Mark, is uh, uh, quoted as saying, there's no future that doesn't have ambient computing or voice activation. There's another quote that Mark said that I think is even uh, more powerful. And he said it previously. And he said, if I were going to start a business today, I'd build it around Alexa and Google Home. There is certainly a lot of excitement and a lot of future uh, behind building voice applications. And so today we're going to talk about Jovo Framework. Now you can obviously build each uh, voice app uh, natively uh, with each respective uh, environment. So with Amazon Alexa, they've got a console you can build there. Uh, with Google Assistant, you can build uh, using their tools there. Uh, what Jovo does is it allows you to build um, one voice application with a single source code and deploy it to multiple places. The platforms that it supports are Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, uh, Dialog, uh, Dialog Flow, uh, Integrations, Samsung Bixby, Twilio Autopilot, and then Facebook Messenger, and there's others. The, one of the things that just changed days ago was the uh, conversational actions, which Jovo just picked up, and uh, or they just uh, integrated with. And, and uh, today, we'll just focus in on Amazon Alexa just because there's so much to go over, and it's a very similar uh, track if you're building between Am Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant, especially now that conversational actions are are included. It used to be that you'd have to, uh, with Google Assistant, you'd have to not only integrate with Google Assistant, but also include dialog flow. That dialog flow step is removed, and so it's a lot more seamless um, to, to do it that way. Uh, if you'd like to contribute, Jovo Tech uh, or Jovo is open source, and so there's a nice web page here on, on, who to con uh, on how to contribute. And uh, I did want to give a little shout out. I'm probably missing some people, but the, you know, the contributors to Jovo, put them on the screen there. I've uh, had interactions with Jan and I think uh, probably a few others, but Jan has been super supportive, very helpful, um, and just a great team behind it. So a few acronyms to know when we get into the voice realm, we're, we're, we're entering into the space of artificial intelligence. Many of you much more expert than myself. And so today we're not gonna go deep dive into what is artificial intelligence and where, where his voice is placed in that, et cetera. But there's just a few acronyms to know when we're uh, trying to build something. Uh, one of the reasons why I had mentioned Mark Cuban's uh, speak or, or quote there about if he were to build a company, he would build it around voice. 
the, um, the reason why I, I mentioned that was because in today's talk, I'd like to talk about not so much building a company, but building a product. How can we actually use this to uh, build a product, to you know, sell something, create something, add something to the world? So the <clears throat> uh, three acronyms here, there's ASR, which is automatic speech recognition. That really covers a lot more than just speech to text, but we'll just call it speech to text for right now. There's NLP, which is natural language processing. The, you can think of that as the big circle, whereas in L NLU, natural, ling natural language understanding is a smaller circle within that. With natural language processing, we're talking about all the things relating to like human um, interpreting what, you know, having a computer interpret what a human is saying. And then NLU itself is, you know, what is the intent of what they're trying to say? The, you know, if I say, hey, could you close the door? Or if I say, hey, shut the door, um, hey, go close that. You know, there's, there's, there's different ways that humans can say things. What's my intent? And the computer has to map that to, he wants the door closed. And so that's what uh, NLU does. And that's in a nutshell. Jovo has this idea of the writer pipeline. And the, uh, it, it, it's pretty straightforward. It's what you would expect. But if you're brand, brand new to uh, voice technology, let's start at the beginning. So in the beginning here, there is a um, smart device such as an Alexa or a Google Assistant where it records your voice. And once it detects that silence, it will send that, uh, that uh, audio file off to be interpreted. That's where ASR and NLU come into play as it tries to interpret, hey, what is the intent of what this user is trying to say or do? And um, ultimately with voice technology, you're trying to map a voice interaction with a function. But as you'll see, it's a little bit more than that um, as we get into the logic. But basically we're trying to just map what someone said to a function. And uh, later on, we've got the dialogue and logic, and that's where you've got your user data, your API calls, that's where things start to get really interesting. And then the response uh, could be voice, most likely voice. It could be text, it could be display. There's lots of different ways that we interact with these devices. So one of the reasons why I, come, I, I wanted to talk about the writer pipeline was because I think it really illustrates how cross-platform Jovo is. We're not just talking Alexa, versus uh, Google Assistant. We're talking about, you know, in the front there, as far as taking in the actual audio clip, there's a whole host of devices that you can utilize, but then all the way down the pipeline, you can swap out vendors, swap out uh, tools, and it's just really interesting. So um, that, that to me really captures what, uh, what Jovo is about with the, with the writer pipeline right there. The, uh, so, <clears throat> The basics of the Jovo framework is that the um, Jovo consists of several libraries that have been extracted so that um, things are a little more simple uh, to maintain. The Jovo client uh, or the Jovo client is, uh, is used for um, interactions between the various platforms and your code. And we'll go over that today. The Jovo model is probably one of my favorites. And that is it's an abstraction layer that helps you create these intents across platforms and, and keep it in a file that can be version controlled across teams. And I think that's probably, if I had to vote, was one of my favorite things. The Jovo framework itself is the uh, request response cycle where it's actually parsing the request and uh, providing some abstraction layer there so you can um, easily do things without having to do so much work. So we'll get right into it. Let's build something. And you can follow along um, on my GitHub. Uh, I've got a, a, a repo there. I can display this at the end again if, um, if I take it off too soon. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch screens here. Sorry, I won't be looking at the camera so much. And oh, this might be a good place just to take a, just a quick question. Nate, I don't see any questions as of right now. Just as a reminder, if anyone has any for Nate, uh, please feel free to either raise your hand, put them in the chat box or the Q&A box. Thank you. Cool. All right, let's see here. Oh, there we go. So stop sharing.
Nate, we do have one person asking if you could please share that link. Oh, absolutely. What Thank a you. smart idea. Um, so if I chat it here, I think that'll work right. Um, and I think Chris actually just shared it. So thank you, Chris. OK, thank you, guys. OK, so OK, can everybody see my screen here? And then feel free to yeah. shout out if um, if it's if the font is too small or, or something. Hopefully. Yeah, everybody... maybe make it just a little bit bigger if you don't mind, Nate. OK. okay. Thank you. Let's see there. All right, make it a little bigger. I'm not sure how to make the terminal. Oh, oh, there we go. Bigger, gotcha. Okay. So what we're gonna do right now is uh, basically build a skill uh, on Alexa. I do it on Google Actions as well, but we just don't have time. And we're gonna cover a lot. I, I thought that covering all of the things that I, I think are necessary to build it is more important than, than kind of proving that Jovo does it across Google and Alexa. Um, the, uh, what you'll see in Alexa is very similar in Google. Just uh, you know, pick what you'd like to do. Alexa seems to have the market share right now, so it's a good one to develop for. Um, the, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just do a little hello world. And, and in this, I wanna really uh, show the importance of Jovo Cli. So I'm gonna go to Alexa developer console and I'm gonna just create a skill. And, the okay. When I create a skill, I'll just go ahead and, and name this uh, Airy. Uh, I forgot to explain what we'll be creating today <laughs> is a air filter helper. For lack of a better imagination, um, what I thought would be a tool is uh, that would be helpful is basically remind you when an air filter uh, in your house needs to be changed. And uh, those should be changed like every 90 days. And so it happens frequently, but sometimes my house will go like six months and I'll be very amazed by how dirty the air filter looks. And um, so this will be a, a clean air helper and ways to possibly monetize this could be to, uh, you know, add, have some way of um, ordering via the app, but we won't go into that today. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, the two things it'll do is it'll record when we last changed it and tell us. And it will um, also remember the uh, location and size of the air filters that we need to know and uh, remember to buy at the store. Um, and then extra credit would have been sent a notification 90 days later to uh, you know, change your air filters. The, um, so here on step one, of what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go straight to Alexa developer console simply because if we look at the, um, the uh, Jovo model right away, it, it, it won't be as intuitive as this. I mean, this is a UI, this is, this is very beautiful, but you'll soon find that it's a little bit slow and tedious. So the, um, basically to, skill, to create a skill, we just name it and uh, we, will, we will click provision our own backend resource and we will keep custom selected and we'll create a skill. Uh, right here, I don't know why you can't just say like, don't do a template, but you have to click a template. So hello world is a good one. All right, so we've got our skill named Airy. And uh, within the console, there's a lot to go over, but we'll just, Stay with what we need to know right now. In the invocation, this is what's gonna bring up your skill. So when you tell Alexa, I wanna do this skill, this is what it's going to be. Um, so what we're gonna do here is just call it air filter check. At that point, we can hit save. Up here, you can see it's training the model and, um, and doing some various things. There's a save and then there's also a build where it will build the model. So what I wanna do first let me make sure I grab the right intent name here. I wanna go over what an intent is. So when we look at the intents, we can see that there's standard intents there. The intents are what I, I talked about previously where uh, a human says something, what is, the, what is the meaning behind it? What is the intent of what they're trying to accomplish? So I'll go ahead and delete this hello world one. 
And we've got these uh, Amazon basic ones, as you can imagine, uh, fallback intent, stop intent, help intent. These are just kind of default values of kind of good to have in your app, et cetera. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is create a custom intent. And when I do that, I create sample utterances. And this is what uh, Alexa does behind the scenes to really develop the model and determine what people say with the different ways that they say it. So uh, last change in air filter, I can say, when did I last change my air filter? Last change, my last change. Um, should I change? Okay. And at that point, we've got an intent. So we're gonna hit save. And then we're going to hit build. Okay. And then what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to grab the project ID and head back over to Jovo. So I grab the, the project ID or the skill ID. Um, and I uh, head over to uh, Jovo. So what I'm going to do right now is show you how the Jovo project interacts with the platform. And so right here, I've got this empty platforms folder. Hopefully everybody can see that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Jovo get, uh, and I'm gonna use dash S for skill ID. You can always do help. Trying a little slower than normal. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so I'm gonna do uh, Jovo get and Alexa skill. And I'm going to do dash S. And then I'm also, I've got an ask profile. So you can have various profiles if you're familiar with that. And so I've just got another one. So before I got this working, I got the ask client installed and I authenticated that with Amazon. And so that's uh, an important step. Makes it look so easy when you've got it all installed previously, um, not the hour trying to get the environment set up, et cetera. Okay, so at this point, what I just did was I grabbed the platform from Alexa. And if I look at the um, you know hidden folder here, I see some metadata about my skill ID. And um, so it populated that for me. And I also grabbed this model. So you can see that this new intent that I created um, has these samples right here. And so I'll show you the back and forth nature of Jovo. I can go to the UI, create things there, pull it into my Jovo project, or I can actually um, change the uh, model in Jovo and push it up to Alexa. And uh, so right there, I grabbed the platform. And if you look at my models folder, it's completely empty. So typically what you do is you would build from your model and that would build a platform and you would deploy the platform to Alexa or Google. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a reverse build because I, I wanna grab what was uh, in um, Alexa. Now I find this really helpful when you don't know or remember how to do the Jovo model perfectly. Um, it, uh, and uh, so uh, this is kind of the path that I would suggest taking in the beginning before you can just write the Jovo model and push it up to, to platforms. The, um, what I'll do now is do a Jovo we actually just grabbed the command for this. I'm gonna do a Jovo reverse build. Okay, so I'm gonna reverse build the uh, Alexa skill and then that will populate my model for me here. Okay, so now I've got a Jovo model. This is that, that abstraction layer that I was talking about previously um, and I'll kind of show you how this works. So, uh, now that I've got my Jovo model, what I would do is my platforms folder, I would ignore um, from the repo, uh, similar to like node modules. Okay, these would be ignored. What I would do is I would commit this file here to my repo, and this is what would be version controlled. So if I look here, I've got four phrases in my intent. And these are the four phrases that are right here. It obviously does a lot more than this, but starting with the basics here. 
So if I wanted to add another one, um, what I can do is um, say, okay, so this is last changed air filter. Uh, let's see here. Tell me the last time, please. Okay. And I'll hit save. So here, instead of the reverse flag, hopefully you can all see that. So instead of the reverse flag, I'll do that. And I will build the platform. And if I look at my interaction model, I should see those, um, that last one there. So now I've got five. And so now I'm going to do a deploy. Grab the command for this really quick. So now I'm going to do a Jovo deploy. Uh, and then I select the platform Alexa skill. And uh, if I didn't do that, it would deploy all the platforms I had. I only have one, so it probably doesn't matter. And then I've got my profile there just because I have a profile. So at this point, we're going to come back over here. And we've got four um, utterances, sample utterances, and it, we, we should bump up to five. So as that does its thing, there's, there's so much that goes into these UI um, Fixes. So as you're as you're in here, you're adding utterances. Uh, pretty soon we'll get into inputs. So if they want to say like give you a value, um, there's other things that's being managed in the Alexa console. Once you do that, you got to go over to Google and do the same thing and go click all the sample utterances and add in the same input fields. Uh, and if you're using other platforms, you'd have to go over there, click on it enter in your sample utterances. You can see where this gets very tedious and as a developer, that just can't be. So um, what I'm gonna do now is hit refresh. Ta-da. So what we've done is we've kind of gone down the chain and back up the chain. Now, what I could do as well, hmm. I think for the sake of time, what I will do is not demonstrate this. Uh, what I could do as well is uh, delete the skill completely and then just build from the Jovo model. So I, I could I could share a project with you that you could build from the Jovo model and have that go right into the platform. So that's that's the beauty of it. So let's let's keep on moving here. So for step one, we've gone over the Jovo Cli. That was the key learning, and we'll speed this up quite a bit. There's an exponential learning curve here as this goes along. Uh, in the three steps, but I really wanted to go over the basics there. So if you just get that from this session, like that, that's all that matters, uh, I guess, and maybe just this next part, because this is where we connected in. So I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna open up the app file. Now the app file is, is uh, where we're gonna do all of our logic. This is where the intent meets our code and we get to do something. So. For this phase, we were just wanting to say hello. And so what I'm gonna do here is hit save. Um, we're looking good. And I'm going to right here, I'm gonna look at the test file. We've got our sample test. Uh, I've, I've uh, rearranged what the sample test is a little bit just for Alexa. And so what I'm testing for is that on launch, we say hello. Right here, we're using uh, internationalization. And in the app file, we are not. So I'm gonna run NPM test and expect to fail. And that's okay. Cause we'll add internationalization on the next step. We wanna get there. And also when you run a test, you have to have the environment running. So I'm gonna do Jovo run. That's another Jovo cli command. Okay, when, the, when you run the uh, Jovo, it gives you a web hook. The web hook is right here and uh, it shows in the console and you can also find it, uh, I was gonna say right here, <laughs> um, but uh, I guess not. The, um, when, you, when we deployed from Jovo to our platform, it automatically set this for us so we didn't have to do it. Now it's kind of a nice thing. So right here, you can see how it set the, the Jovo hook. Now that wasn't when I did Jovo run, that was when I did Jovo deploy that it did that. So if it didn't, if I didn't deploy, I could copy this, I head over to my skill, I click endpoint, 
and I click default region, paste, and then you click the one that says subdomain in it and you're done. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go over to test. And I mean, I just feel like you gotta run at least one test before you deploy. So the running a test there. And as we can expect, we are failing on that match, but no, on nothing else. So it tells us something. The, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say open air check filter. Go over here really quick and just hit build. Whoop. One of the things I have noticed when I when I went to test the first time was I had to disable antivirus. Um, for some reason, that was my my web antivirus shield was having problems with this. So I'm gonna let this build. It looks like the full build was successful, but then it's still saying it's in progress. And that, that does happen from time to time. Sometimes I have to go back, save, hit the build model. Uh, not, not sure what the deal is there. So I, I, I entered the invocation and what that did was it hit the launch function uh, on my, in my app here. So right here, hello there, my name is Ari. Now we, we did Jovo run. If we do watch, then it will watch the files of what we're doing. So if I say, hello there, you look great. Hit save. I come back up here. Open air check filter. I think this is uh, it's my computer being slow now. What's happening though is everything is running off of my local environment here, so I can see what what's happening. Um, So this was, for example, is what the previous request looked like as it, as it hit my computer via the webhook. And um, go ahead and hit enter here. I'm just gonna refresh this. Hello there. You, you look great. My name you. is Ari. Okay. So at this point, we've done our invocation and we have hit our app code. And um, I would love to pause for a few questions here, but let's get to step two, <laughs> see if we can get to step three and, uh, and go from there. But right now we've got a basic hello world where we've hit our app. Things that we edit here, we can test in Alexa. Uh, and if you're using the same, um, uh, profile or email that you use on your other Alexa accounts, you should be able to use it on those devices as well. So pretty cool. Um, so what we're gonna do now is like warp speed here. Uh -huh. um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to step two. <laughs> so warp speed to step two. So step two from the readme, was to now record when an air filter is changed. What we're gonna learn from this is a little bit about states, but we're also gonna learn about uh, data between intents. Okay, so start to get interesting. So um, what we can look at here is when, um, and let's also learn about intent maps. So the uh, what we created previously was uh, was one single intent that basically mapped to a function and it said hello. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, Alexa, I want you to remember that I, I changed my air filter just now. And it's going to save that date. Then I'm going to say, hey, Alexa, when was the last time I changed my air filter? And it's going to say, you did it three months ago. Um, and so that's basically the gist of what we're trying to accomplish. When it does this, it, um, it's going to use a couple new intents because I'm mapping new things that I'm saying to, to functionality. And uh, it also is going to use standard intents. Like, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Or do you want to do that? Nah, never mind. It's going to pick up on yes and no intents. Now, um, what what Amazon and other providers have is they've got these really default, uh, these standardized intents that are very common. Yes and no questions are very common. So you don't have to recreate those as a custom event. Uh, what you can do is just use the default system provided uh, intent. And so if we look at the config file here, we've got this intent map. And all this does is it takes Amazon standard intents and Google standard intents uh, and so forth and maps them to a naming that we pick. In this case, we're gonna map all Amazon yes intents to yes intent, Amazon no intents to no intents and, and so forth. The, um, and I'm actually not sure if you have to map that one, but yeah, I don't think you have to. <laughs> um, the, uh, um, so, at that point, when someone says yes, it's going to go to wherever you say is you know the place that yes intent is supposed to be. You can imagine if you have an app that has several yes and no questions, this starts to get tricky because uh, if they say yes, it can't just go to like the same yes function every time. So that's where states um, can come in and, and appear to be useful. The, um, to use a state, we basically just tag this on before ask. In Jovo, there's two verbs we use, ask and tell. It, when we tell, it says something to the end user and then ends the session. No more, no more uh, mic open, it's closed. Ask leaves the mic open for future interaction. So um, what we're gonna do here is we're going to uh, say, hey, I wanna ask this welcome question. And, um, and we're using internationalization here, I'll show you. Uh, what that looks like. And we're going to follow up with the uh, this state right here. So when I, uh, for internationalization, due to time, it's basically a file in this folder. And this will just make it easier for us to type things because it's all typed out for us. But that first welcome is going to say, welcome to Aerie. I help you remember to change your air filter in your home. Would you like to record a change? So that's going to be the initial interaction there. Um, so coming back to welcome, um, it's going to ask that and if they say, yes, I would like to record it, then it's going to go to this yes here. And that's going to immediately forward to record change air filter intent, which is going to, uh, save a date. And then it's going to tell the user that that was saved and then end the session. So, um, one of the, one of the problems though, is if you look at this, there's all these intents. And if you look at our build here, there are none of those there. All we have is the last changed air filter intent. So warp speed again, let's go over here to the models. And because we're on step two, branch, I've added in all of the other intents for the rest of the uh, exercise here. And this will all be uh, live on, on the GitHub. I realize this is very fast in this short amount of time. And we've got about five minutes left before I want to open up to questions. Um, the uh, So basically right here, same steps as before, where I'm going to do Jovo build. Okay, so that's going to build from my model to uh, the platform. And now I'm going to deploy. And all of this, these intents that I've created will now be available in my Alexa account. Um, one of the things I'm going to skip over is slots. Um, or parameters, entities, basically the ability to um, 
guess or take input with the, with the interaction. Um, I'll leave that to, to you to, to do some reading on, but it's pretty simple as you add an intent, you can um, basically specify I'm looking for a name, I'm looking for a color, et cetera. And you can see that in the uh, Jovel model here with inputs. So, um, which it's actually very strange. They should not be asking for a name here, <laughs> um, but it, it won't hurt anything because I didn't add it up here. Down below, you can see like size of air filter. I'm looking for a width and a height. And, um, and then now you can see my input request here. I'm looking for a width by height and I've got the uh, brackets there to uh, denote an input. Okay, so I'm gonna go back over to my um, Alexa skill. It noticed that there's uh, utterance conflicts. And, um, and so if you, if, you, if you click on interaction model, you can see those. They're right here. Basically it's like, hey, you've got like the same utterances that are mapping to um, different intents. This is confusing me. So we can go in and modify those. It's okay. It'll run with it'll run without it as long as I don't use one of those for right now. So it's building. I just want to make sure it gets built here. Okay, and I go over to test. Okay, so now the intents are available on Alexa thanks to the Jovo model. And now what we're looking for is we're gonna uh, ask if they wanna record something, and then it's going to um, come over here to this state and, uh, and, and record that. So let's go ahead and do open air filter. Connection error. Your Jovo webhook endpoint is not running. <laughs> Please run Jovo run. That was good. Welcome to Airy. I hope you remember to change your air filters in your home. Would you like to record a change? Great. I have saved that for your records. Okay. And um, so what it did right there was part of the Jovo framework is the ability it, it, um, it will save data to a database of your choosing. Could be DynamoDB, could be um, Firestore, uh, in this case, we're using FileDB, which is just a flat file locally, you know, only for development purposes. And uh, so it, it saved this last change field. And if I click on my DB and click on this db.json, I will see last changed there. And uh, so now when I come back here, I'm going to open air filter. Welcome to Airy. I help you remember to change your air filters in your home. Would you like to record a change? You last changed your air filter a minute ago. Ta-da! So unfortunately, we're probably right at time when I should I should stop. Um, <laughs> the uh, we talked about in this one we talked about intent maps where you can take standard intents and map it to similar functions, um, and we talked about states. And we talked talked about saving data in between uh, sessions. As far as the tests go, which I kind of skipped over there, you can see some of, of what we do to test. Part of the Jovo framework is a nice testing suite. You can uh, test based on platform, uh, as you know. So basically, if the platform has a different experience, you can test differently. And um, so, if I run run a test here, should should pass everything. And um, basically what we're doing when we're testing, we're testing that when an intent is called that the expected speech or out, output is, is, is uh, given to the user. So I'm gonna go ahead and okay, I'm gonna advance to step three here. And I'll um, basically just very quickly go over one concept. And that is we talked about user data um, with the, um, the last step here. What we wanna do is we wanna ask a user for a, a variety of air filters. So we've got some 
you know, ephemeral data that if they mess up, we want to just kind of go back and, and do it again. We don't really want it persisting to the database. So we, we introduced the concept of that. And I think for the most part, it's very similar stuff to what we've already learned. So let's just de demonstrate this really quick. So now it's going to ask me if I want to record. Welcome to Aerie. That I changed. I it. hope you remember to change your air filters in your home. Would you like to record a change? So I'm going to say no. This is not ready yet. Nope. <laughs> and um, so back up here. Oh. Okay. So when I ran this file, I just did Jovo run. I thought I did watch. So I'll go ahead and do watch just for next time if I change the file. Um, there's a couple of gotchas there. And I'll end here very soon so I can answer some questions. I am the last speaker, so uh, I think we can go a few minutes over. Yeah, take your time, Nate, no worries. Okay, thank you. Welcome to Aerie. I hope you remember to change your air filters in your home. Would you like to record a change? So I'm going to say no, because I already did that. OK. Would you like to add some air filter sizes to remember for next time? Yeah. Let's do yeah. There we go. Which room is the air filter located? I'm going to say primary bedroom. What is the width and height of the filter in inches? Let's say 30 inches by 40 inches. This filter is in your primary bedroom and is 30 inches by 40 inches. Here's, is that correct? Here's where I could say yes or no, um, if that was correct. Great. Would you like to add another air filter? And I think in this step too, I was trying to demonstrate looping and whatnot, but I'm going to not okay. do another Goodbye. one. Goodbye. And then just really quick here, I'm going to say open air filter. Welcome to Aerie. I hope you remember to change your air filters in your home. Would you like to record? Looks like you do not have any air filters. Would oh. you like to add some? <laughs> well, that was a bummer. The, uh, it should persist that. Um, in any case, then it would, it would list out your air filters. So with that though, I'll uh, go ahead and end and open up for questions. I'll post this live and you'll be able to, to demo it um, and try it out as you please. You know, feel free to reach out to myself. Let me put my slide up really quick. Um, Uh, feel free to reach out to myself or to the Jovo uh, folks with any questions that you have. Thanks so much, Nate. Great presentation. Um, first of all, there are a, lot, a few people asking if you could please share all the links that you used, um, if you don't mind putting those in the chat box. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And if you go to jovo.tech, the docs are really good. Uh, I've been very, very happy with the documentation. And I would say the caveat here, and part of the reason why I didn't go the Google route is because there's a new library that came out that they just launched Google Conversations. And so um, pay attention to that um, as you're developing because you'll want to use the new library, not the old one. Thanks. Yeah, one of the questions here was, Jova will work for Google Assistant as well, right? It will, yep, and it will work on visual displays, which is a, a big question a lot of people have. Is it it um, it can use the Amazon's presentation language, the APL, um, and it it has a really nice interface for uh, doing visual uh, outputs. Awesome. Um, question here: Can I create a Jovo app? that I will take a request and then pass it on to Google slash Alexa without needing Google slash Alexa in active listening mode. Um, uh, I, mean, I think the short answer is yes. Uh, it's very flexible and you can bring your own platform to the, um, to the Jovo framework. So I understand that yeah, you should be able to you know, use your own device. Like if you wanted to create like your own um, uh, hardware to send something over, you could use your own, uh, you know, choose your own natural language understanding. Uh, perhaps you could use like the Google's um, dialogue flow API 
et cetera, you know, something like that to process um, that and then return back to your handler in Jovo. Thanks, Nate. Um, anonymous attendee is saying, thank you. Do you have suggestions for tutorials or will this talk be a video? They could not catch all the commands you went through. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, the, uh, so yeah, the, in Jovo on the website, they've got courses, hello world, trivia, uh, audio, the, the podcast one is really good. So I would go through the courses. The other item, there was another thing where it was like getting started. I found those to be not as helpful as the courses on the jovo.tech website. Thanks, Nate. Um, next question here from Hannah. Are ask profiles something that is unique to Jovo and what are they? Yeah, good question. The uh, uh, ask client is Amazon Alexa's client that runs in the command line. And so if you're working uh, for various accounts, like let's say you're a contractor working for various companies, you can have different profiles to um, access those various accounts. It's similar to an AWS profile. Um, or you know um, uh, other command lines. So it's, yeah, it's not specific to Jovo, but Jovo does support it. So you can hop in, hop in between different uh, uh, Ask or you know Alexa console uh, accounts. Thanks, Nate. Uh, a lot of positive feedback on your presentation here. Um, let me scroll back up all the comments coming in. Um, is Alexa Developer Console really free? Um, Jen is having an Amazon give gave her a screen to give payment info. Yeah, so the uh, it, it should be free if if you if you create a developer account. I'm not aware that I had to put my credit card in or anything like that. And um, when you deploy a skill, you'll have to deploy it somewhere. A, a great place to just to deploy it is to a Lambda function. And at that point, you'd be paying if you got off of the free tier with AWS. Uh, or you know went above and beyond that. The um, Alexa console itself is completely free. Thanks so much, Nate. Um, that's all the questions I'm seeing. We we still do have a couple minutes if anyone has any additional questions. Um, thanks for putting your contact information, Nate. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to reach out if you got questions, and um, once you get started, it you know you can really create all sorts of interesting. Uh, workflows or, you know, skills stuff. Awesome. Question here from Hannah. What was the most difficult part of creating your first skill? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that your, um, Jovo in a lot of ways reminds me of Terraform and with Terraform, you're kind of, uh, you're uh, deploying uh, or creating resources and other platforms, et cetera. So you're just really stressed, I guess, about the naming convention and getting it wrong and um and it, there doesn't seem to be a lot of error output as to why you got it wrong you just misspelled something uh, i guess that's just explaining coding in general but uh what really was the game changer was uh just going to alexa console building it and pulling it into jovo because now you've got a pristine copy and then you know, reverse build that to the jovo model Sometimes I'll screw up my Jovo model locally. So uh, if I don't have it version controlled, I will you know, just pull a fresh copy in from Amazon um, or from Alexa or from Google Assistant just to get like a fresh copy. Cause I'm like, uh, I don't know if I edited this right. Um, so. Thanks Nate. Perfect. We still have a couple more minutes. So if you have questions, we'll hang on for a few more. Cool. I'm going to check here. That should have saved the list. <laughs> so I'm going to just restart this. Here's a question, Nate. Is the workflow similar in Jovo regardless of which platform you use? Um, yeah, I would say the workflow is similar. I guess one of the, um, you know, one of the, 
one of the things that you know is is something that is perhaps not as easy as you'd hope for you know when you think about it in theory and then reality hits is that you do have to know the nuanced nature between different platforms so there's like there's little nuanced things between platforms that you have to go learning uh, there again go to the UI builder for those platforms, pull it into Jovo, build it, you know, reverse build it, and then see what that looks like. Uh, for example, with Amazon, you, you can actually grab a standardized amazon.room input slot, and it, it, it can identify what a room is. In Google, you have to create that. You'd have to build what are the things that Google should be looking for that are identified as a room. And so, um, yeah, that's where the workflow is different, but um, I think that as much as possible, it really keeps the workflow standardized and it reuses as much code as, as you possibly can. But then there's always that ability to say, is Alexa skill do this? Is Google Assistant skill or action do that? And so it's pretty cool in that regard. Thanks, Nate. So I was gonna, let I me mean, do this one more time here. Oops, looks like air filters are tricky. Oh man. Yeah, just looking at this in the database, it stored the air filters, right? So it stored the width, height, and the you know, the different uh, values there. And it's supposed to list them out right here. As far as like sharing those links, I, if I should have confirmed that, should I just put that like maybe in the README in, in the GitHub repo? Yeah, wherever you think is best, Nate. Okay. Um, the other thing to, to if there's anybody uh, still in the room here, uh, the other thing too is they've got a great Slack channel um, or Slack workspace, that's what you call them. And, uh, uh, and that's been great for interfacing with the contributors. They're very active. I, I submitted an issue last night and got a Slack about it this morning. So, Awesome. Welcome to Ari. I hope you remember to change your air filters in your home. Would you? Here's a list of your air filters. Primary bedroom that is 30 inches by 40 inches. Bedroom that is 30 inches by 40 inches. Bedroom that is 30 inches by 40 inches. Primary bedroom that is 30 inches by 40 inches. Hopefully that is helpful because that is the sole reason for my existence. <laughs> there we go, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. You did it. I know, it worked. <laughs> the, uh, you know, it, it is interesting. Sometimes you like, you have to hit save or build or, um, you know, some caching issue or something, but okay, any other questions on, on that? Any last questions, anybody? Just a lot of positive feedback. Uh, great presentation, Nate. 
hey, thank you, everybody. I appreciate everybody attending and yeah, start using Jovo. Well, thanks again, Nate, on behalf of uh, All Things Open and me personally, I work for Riot. We sponsored this track. I want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, there's still some time left to check out the exhibit booth, so make time for that. And uh, thanks again, Nate. Great presentation. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it.